Hello and welcome to the usual Christmas Pyra update. So uh, I want to talk about what happened this year, um, how well we did, what the future will look like and stuff like that. And uh, I'm sorry for the lack of updates during the last month. I was so stuffed with work. I didn't uh, really find the time to send you updates. Mm. GP32 mug, the system that started everything. So yeah. And good coffee, of course, <laughs> you know me. Um, so what happened? What was the plan? And what had, did I have to do? How did we fix stuff and stuff like that? That's all I want to talk to you about in the video. So you can estimate, will I ever get my unit or uh, will I get it soon? And yeah, stuff like that. So the original plan was that we uh, started to assemble the Pyra at the beginning of the year. I plan to uh, assemble the first 100, 150 units myself so that afterwards I can uh, show global components how to assemble it and then let them handle the assembly. With the Pandora they produced around, well, at the beginning 100 units per week. Uh, later on they produced 200 units per week. So yeah, they would have handled that pretty good. They have a lot of manpower than I do have here, so uh, it would have been great just uh, receiving the units and then uh, shipping them out. Well, problem was it didn't work out that way. Um, turns out the shells we received, the cases we had, needed a lot more work than I anticipated. So they were not just working out of the box. They had to uh, manually be fixed. The nubs were getting stuck. Uh, the shoulder buttons didn't work as good. The uh, Some buttons get stuck. The hinge was creaky. The battery compartment was impossible to, off, uh, to open basically. And the keys felt very mushy. So what happened? Where did we go wrong? The interesting thing is, here's one of the prototypes made from the same molds by the same company. Everything works. The nubs are nice. They don't scratch. The buttons are fine. No button gets stuck. The shoulder buttons all work fine as well. The keys feel great. And the battery compartment, well, I don't have a cover here right now, but the battery compartment was working as well. So why did the prototypes work and not the final units? I know there's always some tolerance around there, but every single prototype case worked and not a single uh, of the final cases worked. We all had to manually uh, uh, change them. So when I started to assemble, I didn't want to throw them away because we already paid for the paid for the coating and that was around eight to 15 euro per case. I couldn't give them to global components because of the lot of, uh, of the amount of la uh, labor work that needs to be done uh, to finish this, this, I couldn't have paid that was impossible. The, 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 it would have increased the price of one Pyra for me probably for 100 euro. So um, I had to do this all myself and at the same time find out why that happened, how can we fix this and stuff like that. So yeah, at the beginning the first units were horrible slow. So because I assembled them all and then I f later found out this doesn't work properly. So I had to disassemble them all, find out what the issue was, fix the issue, reassemble them all and stuff like that. Well, after around 100 units, I knew what I had to do and I did this with all the units and the cases from the very beginning. So that worked fine. However, it was still a lot of work, too much work to be fast and efficient. The other problem with that is that I had now boxes and boxes of cases and Pyra parts and everything uh, lying around in my office and the office was way too small for that. Um, so we st partly started to assemble the Pyras at home. My wife helped me with that. But it also meant that we had to move the boxes around, find out which boxes we need for what assembly step, bring them back, assemble them and oh. It was a horrible logistics mess um, and it took way too long. So while well, we ship 180 Pyra so far approximately, so all the pre-pre-orders basically. And if you think that I needed about 40 to 45 
extra minutes, so on top of the 10 minutes I planned for the normal assembly, extra minutes on top for each Pyra, it's about 90 to 100 hours just spending, tweaking and fixing the, the, the shells for just the 180 units. So no, that uh, certainly wasn't the way to go, um, but still I assembled them all. The cases were not perfect, but at least they are working and the units are out in the wild. So we already have a few units and while well, at least from what I can see at the boards, people are uh, still happy with their units. And well, I did find the time to play around on my Pyra uh, the last few days a bit as well, just for relaxing a bit, a few hours. And yeah, Witch Blast is, is, is great to play. Um, Hydra Castle Labyrinth is perfect. And yeah, let's hope there is more coming soon. Mm. But the problem is, well, we had two problems. First, why were the cases so bad? And the second, I need more space to handle all the assembly. The shop has also grown. We increased our uh, stock we have. We increased the products we offer. So we ran out of space as well. Um, so we had to look for a new place, which is not very easy uh, here around uh, the location I'm living. Uh, but we found one in September and we moved the uh, uh, production slowly over there. We already produced um, quite a lot of Mega Drive games. Uh, we produced uh, the Mega Turricans and the Darius for Strictly Limited there. Um, yeah, well, here you can see the room where, yeah, there's still some Mega Turrican here, where, you, uh, where we will also assemble the Pyras. There's a big, big table where we can uh, assemble all the uh, covers at once and put them into the case, similar to what we did with the Pandora, which speeds up the assembly tremendously. Um, yeah, here's also a machine to uh, flash all the uh, Super Nintendo and Mega Drive games and of course uh, to label the games because nothing will be done manually here. Yeah, this is the Pandora room, uh, the Pyra room. There's a lot of stuff still standing around, just boxes and boxes and boxes. And this is the new shop or where the new shop will be. We are moving with the shop next week. So everything will be in one space and one place from January the 1st on. So we're moving the shop as well. That's my uh, workout after Christmas and before a uh, new year. And then we will have everything in one space again. We will have a lot of place, uh, space now, which will help with the assemble a lot because I'm basically daily in that office and uh, this helps with this assembly as well, of course. So we have new space and we finally found out what the issue with the cases is, but more on that a bit later. So, so much for uh, what happened to the Pyra. I have a lot of bad luck. A lot of manual labor work, but now hopefully a full fix, which I will talk about later on. And yeah, the shop, as said, uh, is being moved now as well. Here you can see the old shop, which is a lot smaller than the previous one. Uh, never mind the mess. It's uh, we had a lot of um, orders to ship before Christmas, so they are just papers and, and stuff like uh, that are lying around on the floor because we didn't have the time to clean up after that. We just shipped and shipped and shipped and shipped. And uh, yeah, this small place is what will move into the new space, which is about double the size. So yeah, this will make things a lot better as well. Well, it's good that the shop uh, actually has improved. Um, we offered a few more futures. We adapted to uh, the demands of our customers, which has, has changed a bit during the COVID season. If you want to know more about that, just ask here at the boards because um, I will gladly open all your questions. As usual, I'm pretty open with everything I do. So if you want to get a bit more insight in that, just ask. But I don't want to uh, tell you about that now in that video because it might bore some others who just want to have some Pyra updates. Yeah, but still the shop getting uh, higher revenue and uh, more making more profit is pretty good because I will cover all the additional costs I have with the Pyra. Um, the global part shortage will probably also make um, 
the parts and the assembly and the full production of the Pyra more expensive, but I will not change your price. You will keep the price that has been ordered and I will use the additional profit from the shop to Kada for any uh, loss I would make with that. So, but I'm sticking to my word and yeah, you will keep the same price uh, for the Pyra when you, uh, as when you ordered. So, so much for that. Now, what went wrong with the cases? Well, we found out something interesting. We ordered uh, a batch of new Mega Drive shells from uh, the factory. And I noticed that the plastic didn't look, look as good as before. It was, it looked a bit oily. It, it it's, uh, didn't have the proper structure and had a bit of discolorizations. And we produced already thousands of these cases with the company. So what went wrong there? So I asked Elias and he had an idea yeah, there was something internal going on at the factory. I will, I cannot let you know about that because um, that's internal details. And um, if he wants to tell you, he can do that. He's got an account here at the board, as you know, but I will not uh, go a bit deeper. But um, basically it seems that what has happened to the Mega Drive shells also has happened to the Pyro shells, which means that one of the machine programs was, wasn't set up properly, so uh, one parameter was wrong, which meant that the plastic did shrink a bit more, which meant that everything was a bit cramped than it should have been. So that's why the prototypes are working, but not the final units. And um, yeah, this with everything being a bit cramped, as said, the nubs were stuck against the case here. The PCB were pushing the, uh, was pushing the key mat against the case, which led to the keys feeling a bit more mushy as they should. And opening and closing the uh, lid with the, with the screens was very hard to do as well. And the shoulder buttons also didn't fit. So this was all from one wrong parameter in the machine, which has basically messed up the full production. On the one side, I'm happy that we found out about that issue because that means we can now produce the next batch of cases which will not have that issue anymore and then I can finally stick to the original plan, assemble them a lot faster and then move the assembly over to global components because there's no manual labor any, uh, needed anymore. On the other hand, of course, I am a bit sad because I spent 100 hours just fixing something because of one wrong parameter in a machine. Well, it didn't help. If, uh, uh, at least we did deliver some of the units, the first 180 to 200. And I'm happy I, I uh, was able to deliver the units as, uh, at least. And I was happy to see some of the reactions because um, even though the case was not perfect yet and the battery compartment was pretty bad and stuff like that, People were happy and uh, liked the uh, improvements of the Pyra compared to the Pandora. So thanks for those reactions. They really kept me going with everything. And um, yeah, if you want to replace your case when we have the new ones with the new one, we can either do that for you for free, of course. We won't charge anything. So we can put your Pyra into one of the new cases or we can send you a new case and you can uh, change it yourself. You can, of course, keep the original case if you like. Um, the one we fixed, they should basically work most of the time. But if there's something that annoys you, we will offer you the case for free. There's no question about that. Now we're still the next units that I think the next 50 or 60 units will still use the old case, but everything after that should already switch to the new case. I was hoping to already have uh, the samples for the new case here, but um, didn't make it in time before Christmas. So I will make a new video with a new sample of the new case in January. That case should be fixed with everything. So it should be properly produced with no um, wrong parameters. So it should work out of the box. And they did another change. Even though the battery compartment did work when it was properly produced, the same as it was on the Pandora, so you close it and open it. You know from the Pandora probably there's the, that these tabs like to break. So we did a small change to the battery compartment, 
The battery compartment will now not have um, the same clips as we had before. It will be put on top, so put on here, and then slid just a tiny little bit. So you will put it on, slide it a bit, and this will lock it. They're still working on the change. Uh, the change should be finished on Tuesday and it will be shipped to me with the uh, same batch. Um, so if you're affected with the old case, just let me know. I can always replace it with a new one. So, so much for the Pyra. I'm moving with the shop next week. After that, I will start with the assembly. But I know I promised I will send the email that your Pyra is basically ready to the next 50 uh, users within the next... Uh, I, I promised to do that weeks ago, but I just didn't find the time to do it with all the pre-Christmas stuff and stuff like that. You will receive that email during Christmas time. So if you watched the video, keep an eye on your email folder. You might have received it already, but let's hope the uh, Pyra will be a lot better regarding the build quality in the future and of course also regarding the software. Oh, speaking of software, the biggest issue we still have is the audio codec. At the moment, we're using a very simplified audio driver, which does not use any of the audio accelerations that uh, the, the this audio chip offers. This means that the CPU has to render everything to 96 kilohertz of audio. Yes, this needs a lot of CPU power and of course warms up the Pyra and decreases the battery time. To use the AESS ABE subsystem, as it is called from um, TI, there exists a, a driver for the for an older kernel, which works fine. Nikolaus already made a lot of effort to port it to the new kernel, and basically it compiles, but for some reason it doesn't work yet. So we need someone who can debug this and who can who is able to check what's going wrong there and get the ABE AAS subsystem working on the current kernel as well. This will improve a lot of things on the Pyra as well and I'm very happy to pay money for that. So if you know any developer who would be capable of doing this or if you're a developer yourself and would be able to do this, let me know, do contact me. I will gladly offer a payment to anyone who helps getting the driver to work and uh, well, does the remaining work to fix it. So that's it for me and now is the time to wish you a very Merry Christmas to you and all your family of course. Stay healthy, keep away from COVID, I heard that's not the nicest thing to catch. So see you next year and thanks a lot as always for your ongoing support. And with that, take a sip of coffee and see you.